the last time you were here, you guys had made your way across the frozen tundra to the prison of Revel's End. You had come to Revel's End because a person that you met up with, Delian Harpel, uh, who is a wizard and member of the Arcane Brotherhood, told you that a former senior member of the Arcane Brotherhood that had studied the vast north was locked up there. You were attempting to find a passage into the uh, lost underground city of Yithrin, which is buried somewhere deep beneath the rugged glacier. Without any knowledge of how to open the glacier or how to get there, you had sought out a uh, piece of it that had been discovered in the far north, a spire that had been discovered by one of the other members of the Arcane Brotherhood that was there searching for this lost city, a man by the name of Dazen, whose simulacrum you encountered in the... Sorry. You encountered in the spire. Bellion told you that... Uh, <laughs> she can open the door by herself. Bellion told you that uh, she didn't know the location or how to open the uh, gates to Yithrin, but uh, the former leader of her group, Valish Gaunt, who is in prison there, may have such knowledge. You traveled across the uh, tundra, uh, meeting with much uh, trouble along the way, but eventually made your way there. And then... Uh, met with the uh, warden of the uh, of the prison of Revel's End, a uh, woman by the name of Marta Marthanus. Warden Marthanus uh, told you that her charge was to uh, maintain the safety and security of this facility and had no say into the pardoning process that could only be done by the conciliators that were... Uh, you know, the vocal representatives of the Lord's Alliance cities, and uh, only they had charge over admissions and discharges from the prison, and she could not discharge any prisoner into your custody. Valish, through some clever means of a spell that he somehow managed to cast off despite the multiple anti-magic fields around the prison, uh, informed you that he wouldn't give you anything unless you got him out of this place where he has apparently been locked up now for some years. You learned for trying to basically install himself as a tyrant lord over the Icewind Dale and overthrow the uh, the uh, speak the Council of Speakers that uh, meets at Bryn Shander that rules this entire area and establish himself basically as the, uh, as the ruler of the Icewind Dale. For, and for this, he was locked away in Revel's End. Through some clever convincing and discussions and through some great diplomacy you managed to convince uh warden marthanus that your cause was just and that getting information from valish gaunt was necessary for saving the entire world as it may seem and you implored her to allow you to engage in some sort of ruse to make it seem as though you were getting Valish out of prison, although not, apparently not, a fake breakout, as it were, to um, to gather this information from him uh, without Revel's End ever actually losing his custody. Uh, through strong diplomacy, Marta finally concedes and as we last left you, she looks over at the group and says, tell me what you need. And that is where we will take everyone to now. The prison at Revel's End. And you are inside Revel's End now. Audio check. Let me know if things are too loud. How's the audio? Good. Sounds good. Okay. One moment, and I'll take us all there. But bear with me a little bit here because uh, I'm on an alternate machine. It's gonna take me just a minute. Okay. Found it. 
And because it's hard to do things on a Mac, brought to you by Mac, it just works. <laughs> it just works if you know how to do it. I used Macs for a long time and got really proficient with them and then stopped. And I, it, it, let me tell you what, it is not like riding a bike. It is all gone. Every time I try to use Stephanie's computer, I have no idea what I'm doing. Imagine DMing with it. Uh-huh. If only okay. you were using something civilized like Linux. Exactly. And I have no idea how to make you zoom. I have, I have no idea how to make you zoom in, but you all are over here in the uh, in the conference room with Marta Marthanas, Warden Marthanas, and um, you're there with a couple of guards and with Valian um, Harpel. If anybody is not there, let me know. I need to add anybody's character there. And uh, the warden looks at you and says, what do you need? I'll tell you right now that it is approaching, I don't remember what time of day it was. Um, you'd requested another meeting with her, so I would say it's probably midday. She had breakfast and then came to have another meeting with her. So yeah, we'll say midday. And she looks so, around. So my thinking, and this is this is more table talk than anything else. Sure. We can is that pull it time. My thinking is if the more illusion stuff we have at our disposal, the better we may be able to pull this off. And I, I'm just wondering sort of how much stuff they have confiscated from the people who come here hiding in a closet or a vault somewhere that we might be able to leverage to make this real. Are you asking Martha? Oh, Melissa, a wild Melissa appears. I have arrived. Uh, Melissa, you are all in the uh, room with Warden Marthanus at uh, Revel's End as you have managed to convince her to engage in some sort of ruse to make Valish Gunt think that he is being freed from prison to divulge information that you all desperately need in order to find out how to make your way into the city of Yithrin. All right. So the things that we need to with from my perspective are his ability to do magic which absolutely terrifies me uh yeah marthana says that the most of the facility is um cloaked in anti-magic she says that this room here very specifically uh has some limited magic ability uh she tells you that like um they use it for interrogation purposes. So um, you're not allowed to do any, uh, the, the rules of our visitors are not allowed to do any like mind probing spells, but they have some magical like abilities in this room to allow interrogation. And you presume that's how he managed to send a message spell to you. But she tells you that basically the other entire internal grounds of the prison are anti-magic. So he won't be able to cast spells on you in the grounds of the prison. As as can and, the but guards... You to, but you won't be able to use illusion magic either. Oh, that's true. So the um, so the management of the prison cannot yeah. conduct magic either. So it's the building itself that's suppressing the magic, not something they're actively doing. Yes, there's an anti-magic field. Got it. And uh, that could be turned off, but that would have potential for great peril. Right. 
yeah, I think that sounds like a real bad idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the opinion, just handcuff them, blind them, and blindfold them, and gag them. She says, we could arrange for you to have cuffs and blindfolds and gags, whatever is needed, whatever you would need. She says, but I will not allow him to get far off of these prison grounds in your ruse. I will not allow him to es to actually escape. You've made it clear to me, you've made it clear to me that this is important, that you need this information. So you need him to think it's real that he's getting out. But I will not allow him to actually escape. And if you attempt to actually escape with him, she looks at all of you and says, "Then you will find yourselves all in cells with him." How far will you allow him to get so that we know what our theater of operations is here? Within visual sight of the prison. Okay. I will I'm allow sure that's you to be, I will allow you to be outside of the grounds, but you need to be with, basically within, like easy capture range. That sounds like a pretty good distance. Uh, not that far. No, a couple hundred yards or so. Anything I don't know. It's a pr it's a pretty tall prison. We yeah. saw it from we yeah, saw okay. it for so, three days away. So, so. yeah, okay, and I'm so sure I'm your guards can see pretty far. <laughs> I'm sort of misspeaking here, I guess. Uh, within a few hundred yards, basically. Like, you're, you're not going to be able to get, like, miles and miles away. Mm. You might could bargain with her for more. If we... So that this is just talk amongst us. What if we convinced her to allow us to blind him, put handcuffs on him, make him think we're having an escape... Just take think, him in a circle around? I must walk about three miles around the prison cast tiny hut put him in the tiny hut and say we have escaped to a fork to you know some secret location to make him think that we have carried him far away i like that idea we've also got a portable fortress yes i think that's what he's talking about mm -hmm. it doesn't have windows does it it does have windows i'm sure there's rooms in there that don't yeah, you just put up some tapestries, right? Yeah. <laughs> some pelts. We can put those pelts to good use. I mean, he's not actually going to talk to us unless he thinks he's free, right? As mm -hmm. long as he doesn't go to a window. Put well, him in the room that's like that's facing the you. forest. You're going to have to come up with like a ruse that is good enough to fool him, basically. What we're going to have to do is roll really well is what we're going to have to do. Well, we can just hang it up right now, then. <laughs> no. So, when it really okay, matters. Let, all right, let me let me table talk with you guys as the DM, okay? The better your plan is, the lower the roll has, the lower the rolls have to be. Like if you come up with a really good plan that's really convincing and fooling that would fool him, then you don't have to roll that high. If you like, just walk out of the prison into a fortress with no. Like, no one trying to stop you, or just like you had the keys to the door, opened it up, and walked out. <laughs> then that might not be as fooling. <laughs> it's okay. So we gotta, like, shove him around a little bit while he's blindfolded. I don't know. That's up to you guys. And then throw him in the trunk. And well, drive around for a bit. Probably. That's up to you Go guys. Over a few railroad tracks. I do think that the um, that the prison guards have got to play an active part of making uh -huh. a show of fighting us. Um, we promise not to stab anybody too hard. That's pretty essential in selling this, I think. Yeah. Agree. She's willing to get the guards to participate in whatever you tell them to do whenever you're ready for it to go down. What is a... From, from her perspective, what is a plausible, like, where are our plausible opportunities for escape? She knows the prison. She knows how she'll prevent people from getting there. What's something that is... She, she, chuckles, she chuckles a bit at that, actually. She says, no one has ever escaped from Revel's End before. It's, it's never been done. To ask me how it would be done... Um, how would you escape? Other than... With the 
key in the front door. Uh, roll persuasion. Okay. There've got to be some ventilation shafts, right? Yeah. What what holes have you found? <laughs> Anything? Oh, Where good. would Andy Dufresne leave from? <laughs> Where would how would Andy Dufresne do it? Okay. She says, "Well, it would not be possible with him still inside of his cell." Clearly. In, in the cell, this is impossible to escape from. Blasting out, tunneling out, or magically removing somebody would not be capable. And you'd have to communicate with him somehow that you plan to spring him prior to it happening. So that he has some feeling or inclination that this is what will what will go forth. Um there'll have to be some reason for him to leave his cell. Perhaps um perhaps you are able to spring him from one of the uh I don't know one of the uh courtyards or recreation yards or something like that when he's been able to be out of the cell for fresh air perhaps you have some create some manner of chaos and manage to make it look like you've got some sort of hoist lever throw him over the sides of the the prison walls knock out gas I, d I don't know clearly it can't be magical but that's not to say that there's not other means that you could use to disable the guard systems. You all are the schemers and planners. That's all I have, is to simply walk him out of his cell seems impossible. Perhaps you have some reason to get him out of his cell. Well, we had him drug out of his cell yesterday for our previous conversation, so that seems like an interesting place right. to start. Right. Right. And that also seems like an interesting place to start from the idea of the jailbreak itself. We've got to figure out a way, though, to make it appear as though we've incapacitated you and the guards in the room in a way that doesn't harm you and it is not actually magical what do you propose mm. um quick quick point of order by the way is yatara here or not yeah because yatara is but, but Yata yatara is cloaked right yeah, like like a bird of prey mm. yeah. yeah did you recloak yourself yatara yeah, I'm still, yeah, because the last we left it was it would be very suspicious of just a new member just that <laughs> appeared in the conference room. Yeah, okay. Don't, so, don't, yeah, you're terrorist. Indeed it would. <laughs> we walked in here with this bird of prey. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're still invisible. I'm going to rule that uh, that's not canceled out by the anti-magic field, so. So... He's in his cell. Yep. And our goal is to get him somewhere we can get him out of the prison, get yep. him out of the prison, and then get him to a place that looks like it at least may support a jailbreak I, without using magic. That, that's sort of what she felt like. What she about maybe one of the courtyards, one of the recreation yards? What about um, devices that have radiant effects? My, uh, the weapon, what was confiscated from me, can produce brilliant radiant light. Would that be suppressed by the magical field? Um, she says probably. Because it, it could emit a burst of bright light that could be could fool him into thinking that it blinded y'all and and allow us to make good his escape and i put escape in air quotes <laughs> but in order to, to use that or to attempt to use it i would need my my religious relic that looks suspiciously like a weapon
just sort of sighs and says, uh, Very well. At the very least, we could try and see what happens with it. And then if it is, if, and if it is not helpful, then we'll know. Okay. Very well. And uh, she speaks to one of the guards, and uh, they bring you your staff. Um, which is to say, Dust Crusher? Yep. Or the lance. Dust crusher. What okay. you're asking for. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, should I attempt to roll something to see if I can ignite it? Are you going to try to ignite it in this room here? Well, we need to test it first, right? <laughs> because I don't want to actually incapacitate somebody. I'm not going to activate, like, the death ray. I just want to see if it will ignite the normal glowing radiant effect that it has. Well, you know that some limited forms of magic are allowed in this room. Right. You going to try to ignite it? Yeah, and I'm telling her that I'm doing this. I'm like, okay, this is a test to see if this will, this will work. Okay. And it does not. It seems to be suppressed. Okay, but I do like the I do like the blinding as a distraction thought. Are there perhaps in the confiscatorium some blinding grenades? Hmm. Some maybe evil works of artifice. Are you capable of producing such things? Um, no. <laughs> Oh, but it sounds like. Sure? <laughs> it's just... I don't know what you're talking about. I, you're... I can have you escorted there if you wish to. If you wish to view the armory. I, I would very much like to peruse the confiscatorium. The confiscatorium. The confiscatorium. Love it. <laughs> She says, weapons uh, of prisoners are not kept on site, but um, but I can field show trip. you, but I can show you the armory and uh, yes, field trip all the way to Neverwinter. Uh, I can show you to the armory and to our uh, to our stores. Uh, there are you asked about explosive materials. There are. Um, there is a good bit of mining and um, rock breaking that has to happen here. So the, we do have some mining explosives that are kept uh, secure, but uh, you're welcome to, to peruse them if you like. Are there any are there any mine tunnels? Yeah, I'm interested in that too. None that I'm aware of, not leading into the prison, certainly, but in the area, there are lots of old dwarven mines in the area. Mostly, you know, excavating and repair work and things of the nature that we occasionally have to clear out. Weren't there docks near here? Yes, certainly. We have to get regular supplies. As we are so remote, we... Uh, we can't maintain most of our a lot of our own supplies. We're not self-sufficient. We require routine shipments, and most new prisoners come in by ship. So it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility if we were to escort him out of here and make him think we're going by ship, and it maybe not be ready, and us have to wait on the ship for a while. That wouldn't necessarily cause suspicion, would it? No, not necessarily. You would have to have some tremendous hiding place as any escaped prisoner with the hunt would begin immediately and become suspicious if they did not board no. some raft quickly or have some other means of escape hmm. but yes ships would be a very common route of both you know, entrance and egress do you I, I don't remember from the dock looking at the dock is there a ship that stays there, or do you await one being sent from what, the Ten there's, Towns? There is currently a ship here that is 
unloading as we speak. But they're not routinely here. Hmm. The ships come less and less now as the uh, ice has grown thicker and denser. Now we are receiving ships once per once per quarter at best. It is a three months before we see another ship. But in luck you are as one is docked. That's an interesting option. How big is the ship? The ship? I, I don't know. I, I have not queried. How many? Cabinet. How many stories is the ship? I'm not a I shipologist. Not... How many? <laughs> <laughs> how many levels? Going... It is an ocean-going vessel capable of breaking through ice. So a pretty big-sized ship. Indeed. So, what if you and a platoon of your finest guards were to stow away in the ship, and we made him think that we had made good an escape on the ship, and then once we have the information, then both we and you re-secure him and bring him right back here. This could be and, acceptable. And then that would ensure that you would have eyes and a personal presence in the whole thing, and you would know firsthand that we're not actually making clear with him. And that would also open the possibility of us using the ship because without that, I'm not comfortable attempting to sail away because you would rightly suspect that we're trying to take him away for good, which we have no intention of doing. This seems acceptable. I would agree to this proposal. Well... <laughs> My flashing plan didn't work out very well. Flashing. But we got a destination. We got the end <laughs> of the plan in place. And I, it sounds pretty good. We get him to the docks, into a ship, and then get the information and ambush him with superior firepower. So we just got to figure out how to get him from his cell mm -hmm. to the docks, and we can use the armory to help us figure that out. Okay. <laughs> Um, does do they have um, yard time every uh, every day? For uh, periodically, yes, with the weather permits, and it is not too frozen over. We will allow a few prisoners at a time into one of the uh, courtyards to engage in various forms of recreation. Oh. This is gets yeah. tricky because we've got to get him. And not, and we, I don't want to deal with multiple jailbreaks. <laughs> Do we have a that would be a facility problem. map, Jeff? Hey, again, sir. Do we have a facility map, a map of the prison? Uh, she can provide you with one. So that we might be able to, just, just thinking of <clears throat> getting to a spot that would allow egress to the docks. I don't really have one to give to you. Uh, oh, no, that's you, fine. She tells you that the docks are sort of in this direction. She suggests the uh, northeastern courtyard. If you're looking at a courtyard, this is the one that is closest to the docks. But there is a large cliff face that one would have to descend, if not take the elevator down to the docks, as the docks are at the bottom of the cliff. Okay, how close is that elevator to that courtyard? Not, not far. And does the anti-magic field extend past the walls of the prison? No. Okay, so if one were to jump off and cast Featherfall, one could reasonably expect that it would work. Yes. Okay. All right. Just that keeping that in the back of expectation. Are you planning on jumping off the cliffs? Depends on how hard it is to get him into the elevator. 
Okay. When would you like for us to bring him to the courtyard? Recreation time would have passed for today. We could arrange it on the morrow. And how do you plan to make your egress from? So my my thinking is either brute force and just barrel to the elevator, take it down and have a, a big fight at the bottom as we valiantly escape. The courtyard has three guards on a uh, tower with walls of about uh, 30, 40 feet high, surrounding it with no entrances or exits, save for the entrance to the tower and the ladders that climb to the top where the three guards are stationed, and the one door leading back into the face of the prison. The walls are approximately eh, about 10 feet five feet thick of stone. About five feet thick stone wall. 20, 30 feet high. Hmm. There's a ladder leading up to the guard tower inside of the guard area. And how how upset would you be if a hole was blown through the wall of the courtyard? Just, just, <laughs> just on a scale out. of zero to ten, <laughs> get me really angry. I would be perturbed. <laughs> About a six. <laughs> All right, we got wiggle room. Uh, I I would not I would not be happy if you blew a hole in the wall of my prison. Oh. It it would get us over the edge real quick. Uh, yes, certainly. What it, if he said he was like, sorry after? She just looks at you. She just looks at you and says is your plan to explode a hole in the wall of a prison and then go down to a boat and just wait there? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, it doesn't sound like a very good plan. <laughs> I get my crayon out and start crossing things up. When you say it in that tone of voice. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure we're as all in our head. I'm just trying to make sure we're all on the same page here, because it appears that there's two different missions in play. One is a stealth wait on a boat for a stealthy escape, and the other is blow a hole in the side of a giant prison to engage in the stealthy escape. Okay, okay, that's that's a fair point. It, when you put it like that. When you put it like that, it sounds like we should try to go down the elevator. I mean, I don't know... It's up to you guys. <laughs> and she shows you to the armory. Uh, I'll take you there real quick just to sort of advance things along a little bit. Uh, 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 who wanted to go to the armory? Uh, Leonard. Leonard wanted to go to the armory. Okay. Let me find where the armory is. Just so you know what side of the building and stuff it's on. Okay. There's not really any pretty pictures to uh, to show you there. It is room 10. All right. The armory is over here, which is actually pretty close to his cell. Uh, inside of the armory, you don't find any real magical weapons. You find uh, all manner of swords, shields, uh, crossbows, crossbow bolts, etc., 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 there are um, there are some exploding powders and things like that. Uh, they've got you know phosphorus and like saltpeter and stuff like that that would be uh, flammable and explosives and the the workings of ex of exploding things. 
Uh, but all mechanical stuff. There's not like a giant store of magical weapons in there. Okay, I um, I'm gonna step up to these exploding powders and see if, with my artifice skill, I can fashion. <clears throat> some uh, explosive devices, some IEDs, if you will. Um, what are you ideally, trying to produce? So what I'm trying to produce is ideally flash with no bang. So you want to... So I want a bright distracting light that is perhaps blinding to anyone who looks at it but gotcha. I don't want to blow a hole in a wall apparently <laughs> maybe, maybe you do listen the, the 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 warden is opposed to anybody blowing a hole in her prison uh, yeah okay uh, yeah you but, can but I'd like to so <clears throat> the, the other thing no plan survives first contact with the enemy so Explodey bits are plan B, and I would like to be prepared to, to make that happen if necessary. Okay. Uh, roll me an artificing check. Okay. Uh, can I do that with Arcana? Uh, sure. Describe to me how you're doing I am not on the screen to see. What did you get? Ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, you... Uh, yeah, you're able to uh, cobble some some combination of uh, exploding powders, mixing uh, uh, magnesium, basically magnesium oxide and uh, phosphorus and, um, you know... Uh, blasting powders together into a uh, little bags of powder that you are hopeful won't uh, blow up, but will uh, burn very, very brightly. Okay. That's, that's I think, as, as much as I could hope for at this point. Yeah, you're not... You've never done it before, so you're not 100% confident that you have been successful at that endeavor. Uh, but you're able to cobble together from supplies something something to that effect. Uh, now you were also trying to make boom boom. I, I would like to make <clears throat> at least one. So what I, my my goal would be to make a couple of the blinding ones and one explodey one. Okay, I'm going to give you the check for each of them. You have a couple of what you think you've made are blindies. Uh huh, and roll it again to make a boom boom. And yep, why? Why? Okay, you have made things go boom before. Uh huh. You are, you are much more confident in your combination of uh, explosive powders that you know, and what you're able to find there. You're able to create, you know, like a little hand grenade, basically. Like a little tannerite bomb or something. Uh, probably more powerful than that. Uh, you're fairly confident you can knock a hole in that wall five feet thick. Uh, oh. With what, with what you've gathered together. All right. Yeah, you're fairly confident that if you needed to blast a hole in the wall, you could do it. You've made things go boom, boom before. So, yeah, that's what you're able to gather up. What's the All rest right. of the crew doing and discussing while Leonard goes off to start making flashy bomby boom booms? I want to help him since I'm like an artificer in training type thing. Oh, okay. How are you aiding Leonard? Uh, I guess just handing him stuff and watching him. I don't know okay. what I'm doing yet. Uh, Leonard, you want to re-roll that? Hand him the wrong deck? screwdriver. Oh, yeah, I will. Take advantage I on will. that. Mm -hmm. pin. Take that opportunity. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, so Ordella, describe to me how you caught Leonard screwing up <laughs> and have fixed it. What did he mess up? What, and what, was, what did he mess up and what was it going to do? It was going to be like the broken string of Christmas lights and you couldn't find which which bulb it was. So, uh, Was it going to blow up in his face or was it just not going to ignite or what was it? Oh, if anything, it was just going to fizzle out. Okay, so it just, yeah. it just wasn't going to do it. It was, it, it like, was going to make a, <laughs> like he's trying to make a flashbang, basically, and he created one of those little like Christmas poppers that you throw on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did you do to fix it? Um, I stopped him and handed him a different bottle of stuff. It's like no, you're read like, the label. You're like no, 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 no. We want to actually make light. And uh, with Ordella's aid, you are much more confident in what you've produced. Good. Love it. Okay. <laughs> What's everybody else doing? Um, yeah, the, the warden has sent you two off. Uh, Velian is sort of willing to go along with whatever you guys think. Uh, we've got Cadillac, and we've got Harkus, we've got Zarya, and we've got Invisible Yatara. And she asks, you know, like, where do you want him, and what do what do my men need to know is going to go down? Leonard, we can bring you back into that conversation if you want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to do those things that you'd wanted to do. No, I I appreciate that. I am grateful for building some bombs. Yep bomb builders still dragging you sorry do, 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 do. all right you take him back to the conference room <clears throat> okay so i think the courtyard nearest um if we can perhaps create a distraction and rush the door back into the prison. Spirit him away to the elevator, down the elevator, and then a big convincing fight at the bottom. Oh, very well. You wish me to station guards at the elevator? Well, would, would there be normally guards stationed at the elevator? Um, perhaps. Not necessarily routinely, but I could put some there. Well, I want it to I want it to look like the prison is secured and well patrolled, but not that we're walking into an ambush. So maybe not like nothing a too different. Set piece battle, but something within the spectrum of normal operations. Well, he certainly wouldn't know. He would have no concept as to uh what would be ongoing amongst the guards. And yes, that's true. I can station guards at the bottom of the elevator to put up some feigned resistance. I yeah, I, I think that sounds like a good idea. I could put up feigned resistance. Uh, in you'll have to put up some feigned resistance in the courtyard as well, and perhaps okay. in the uh, hallway. <clears throat> Now, once on the ship, are you going to, how are you going to, uh, you're going to simply take off in the ship? So, um, I think, uh, the ship should be minimally manned when we get there. And it should appear as though the, uh, crew, uh, don't want anything to do with the firefight because they're just sailors and maybe they just abandon ship. Okay, very well. I can... And that will prevent us from having any sort of situation where they may get hurt. I don't have any sailors on my watch, and I don't command the ships, but uh, as best I can, I will uh, see what I can be arranged. Oh, the, uh, just a thought occurs. We'll need to be able to um, pilot the ship, so we, we, hmm, we may need 
we may need the sailors now that I think about it, or at least a skeleton crew to function the ship. She looks over and she says, if you are actually going to sail the ship off the grounds any distance, then I am going to be stowing my men on the ship to take Absolutely. Back my asset. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the plan. And we want to make sure that he doesn't slip through anybody's fingers, and so we would appreciate your help in any event to make sure that that doesn't happen. Once he is off the grounds, he may be able to cast spells. He almost certainly will. Um, we will be up to the challenge, and with your stalwart guards there as well, he will have no hope. Very well. Are there anti-magic cuffs? Are, are those thing? Is that a thing? I mean, many spells require somatic components in moving one's hands, so simple cuffs can cut out many spells, but. You would need, you know, gags to prevent verbal components. Ah. You don't need anti-magic cuffs. Just simple cuffs will prevent most. Here's the other right. thing. I can't simply bring him into the courtyard by himself. Prisoners are not taken to recreate singly. This would be very peculiar. Who does he normally go with? It's randomized so that alliances and, and cliques cannot be formed. Oh, well, that's handy because outside of the confines of this uh, keep, there's another member of our party who you have not met. They did not come in with us. They did not walk up with us. Um, and he has not met them. And so, to all he knows, this other member of our party could be another... Um, could be another uh, person in the jail. And I could go and fetch this other member of our party who is uh, just sort of uh, keeping watch over some stuff we stowed a little bit away. And um, that might give us an opportunity. I mean, could that not be the said for any one of you, I suppose? But, he's, met uh, of all, he's met all of us, though, already, right? That is true. Yeah. Baelish has met all of us. And this other member of our party is extremely trustworthy and would never attempt to sneak anything under anybody's nose. Very trustworthy. He sort of sighs and says, very well. You may go fetch him. Okay, so I, I guess then Cadillac makes a big show of uh, exiting the room. <laughs> and I guess exiting the keep to go get Yatara. <laughs> I guess it just depends on what Yatara does. I'll follow you out so you can go fetch me. <laughs> All right. It would totally able... be hilarious if you just kind of stood there and like, oh. <laughs> like Yatara I was supposed to go with it. him. Yatara doesn't get it. Yatara didn't. Yatara didn't. Catch didn't get the memo. It's like, hey, who else is Cadillac. there? Yeah, Yatara is really dense and just didn't catch what Cadillac was putting down at all. I was like, there's another member of our party? <laughs> I wonder who's going to show up. <laughs> it's Why on. haven't I met him? Or just from the corner, there's no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> better. Oh, if, if only our Yeti... His voice is in my head again. You hear them too? If only our Yeti had survived. The Yeti could okay. have been the other member of the party. So, it, your owlbear. Oh, yeah, the owlbear. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Yatara, you follow him out, and uh, you're able to bring uncloaked Yatara back in, if you so choose. I do so choose, if Yatara so choose. I do. Uh, yeah. You're able to do that. Yatara, you're de-weaponed on the way in. Even so, you're not allowed to uh, be carrying a weapons.
And she says, um, very well. To make it seem real, Mr. Yatara, I suppose I may need to have you spend the night in Revel's Inn. <laughs> Just prisoner, like old times. Prisoner number 242. You've only had 242 prisoners in this whole place? Currently. There are currently 241 prisoners. Oh, I guess their numbers don't get retired. Yes when, they, re yes, when they die here, the numbers get to be reused. What do you do with their bodies when they die? Um, it depends. Helps. They are allowed to be returned to their family by ship many times. Uh, and if there is uh, no family, they are oftentimes uh, cremated or potentially buried at sea. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. We, uh, we, we don't execute people here, uh, but we do have uh, several that will never leave. Lest they're given clemency, which I doubt. It's very civilized. Thank you. Uh, Yatari, if you're willing, you are, she will take you and process you and make you prisoner number 242. Yes. Do I get Thank tatted? you, Yatara. <laughs> Do you get what? Do I get tatted? <laughs> uh, not unless you want it. Does Yatara want to get tatted? 242? 242 for life. Uh, she asks, do you wish to be prisoner 237 cellmate? Oh, you could be a stelly. I mean, how many other cellmates has he had? I don't know. That's a good question. What he happened to them? He currently has none. I don't know how many he has had. If no, she's just going to put you in a different cell. Ooh. Now, if you were buddies, then you could lay the groundwork for hatching this escape plan. I also be a little afraid he would he would catch on. It just seemed a little too weird. Mm. A new person that just shows up, and then all of a sudden we're getting broken out the next day. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. But your buddy's already had a plan in place to kind of break you out and, you know, don't stand in your way to get out or come with you. Just, just depends on how good you are at selling it. Mm. I'm just giving you the options. It's those That aforementioned excellent roll. <laughs> <laughs> that we're so Never famous mind, for. plan B. <laughs> the DC of your rolls depends on how good of a plan you have. Hopefully he won't kill you in the cell. I think that so far we've come up with a shockingly passable plan. Yeah, this seems like it might work. Possible. Okay, so we're going to attempt this tomorrow morning? That'll be on you. Uh-huh. I think so. I mean, any other preparation or contingencies we want to put in place? Mr. Yatara, are you going to be selling minutes with 237? 242? Are you going to be 237's new mate, or are you going to your own cell? I'll be a cellmate with him. Okay. You are then escorted by guards 
and the uh, guards take you two in hand, and you are cloaked up in the uh, uniform of a prisoner, and you have number 242 slapped on yourselves, and uh, they bring him out and make a big show of it, scream to the uh, central cube, open cell whatever number, and uh, they direct you Prisoner 237, step back. Prisoner 242, enter cell. And you're allowed to enter, and there are two cots in the room. One has a man currently lying on it uh, that you've not seen before, and the guards, you're like, close gates. And um, you're there. The rest of you are, uh, she tells you that... uh, 242 and 237, along with a couple of other prisoners, will be brought out to the yard at 9 of the clock for routine recreation. You all can make your plans at that point. I will alert the guards that the scuffle that is going on is authorized and to make it a good show. Uh, You may... Exit to the conciliator's rooms, and uh, we'll see what happens. So, the rest of you are escorted by the uh, warden to by the warden's men to the rooms that you stayed in the previous night, basically. Uh, there's still evening chow, and you all can do something if you want to. But you're in these rooms down here. Yatara, prisoner 242, you are tossed into the cell with prisoner 237. Uh, 237, who you know is Valish Gunt, but doesn't know you, and you maybe you don't actually know who that is, are tossed in there now, and it is... By this point, early evening time. What do you do, Yatara, as you're now prisoner 242? He looks over at you and says, chewing on something and says, why are you here? What got you in here? I'm going to ignore his question and just go stand by the, by the cell door and stare out intently in be very observant about what's going on. He kind of spits a little bit and says, fine, have it your way. I haven't had a cellmate in quite a while. You'll get used to it. It's nice to talk to someone every now and then. Ugh. I'm going to tell him, don't get used to me. I'm not going to be here for long. Ha! Huh. You think? <laughs> what? What makes you think that? Are they going to give you clemency? You got a hearing before the conciliators? Something like that. <laughs> What's your name? Gunt. Bellish Gunt. And you? It doesn't matter what my name is. M. Very well, mysterious stranger. So, might as well make friends now, despite what you think. No one has ever made it out of here outside of being granted clemency. And if you just got locked in here, there's not any chance that you're going to be granted it anytime soon. But, whatever. And he sort of rolls over. He, look, he rolls over one more time and says, he didn't happen to see another group of people. They brought me in yesterday for interrogation. Former old woman, shrewd, uh, sort of rat-haired, gray, and a party of other bozos asking questions. You don't know anything about them, do you? 
I thought I saw the redhead one, but I haven't seen anyone else. The Why greyhead that? one? Hmm. They even brought me into the interview room. You're not related to them in any way, are you? I told him only way I would help him is if they got me out of here. You're not somehow part of that, are you? I tell him I don't know who he's talking about, but I do have my own plans to get out of here soon. At the if the right moment approaches. Yeah? How's that? Ask him a deflect and ask him how long he's been in here. He looks at the ticks on the wall and says, Three, four, four years now. All I can remember is my hearing three times over and three times over hearing no. Hmm. Ask him what is he what is he in for? <laughs> I am here because lesser men don't know who should rightly rule. I am here because idiots run our society. We are governed by lesser men that foolishly waste their power and ambition to squander the world in which we are in uh, for their own profiteering. I am here because I had a vision for a greater place and that threatened some, some people. I'm gonna start making small talk with him like I'm warming up to his ideology. <clears throat> yeah. Like I'm on his side. He'll kind of talk with you about it. There's a, uh, tells you our world, the underpinnings of our entire world is based upon the arcane. These people live their entire lives entirely oblivious to the most powerful force in the world. Why should not knowledge of the arcane be that which decides the rules upon our world? Would you, would you live in a society that was based upon energy and allow those to govern and rule people have no knowledge or understanding of the energy that guides the entire world it's like being led by ignoramuses I tell him we need more people like him in the world and hopefully he will have his opportunity not if uh, none of these people have anything to say about it there's such power in this place they don't even understand if they could freeze and die here in the ice cold and we could live in castles floating in the sky and cities that hover the planet and a, we could be a great power to rival the netherese but th they fear they fear the power that that those those tremendous people once had if i had my way I had a sliver of that power. I would bring such greatness to men. No one ever need be hungry again. No one ever need starve or freeze to death. And all it need is those who have the knowledge and ability to rule should you know, feign excitement when he's talking and tell him that at some point I feel very confident that we will have our opportunity to escape from this place and then go lie down on the cot he looks over and he says what do you have in mind do you have a plan Unfortunately, my brotherhood seemingly has abandoned me. Other than the old scarecrow looking for information, I see no agents from the arcane brotherhood coming to gather me. 
they'd rather me rot here. You say anything else to him? You want to tell him that um, I'm going to ask him who specifically was in the party earlier, if he could describe them that he saw around. I don't recall. There was a there's the old Bat Valian Harpel. She was only allowed into the order based on her family name. There was a dwarf wearing armor of some sort. And uh, a mechanical man who had the appearance of one from the Great Sentinel Wars. There was uh, two orcish folk. And then a Goliath woman, large, tattooed. At that point, I set up, I set up on the cot and I tell him, I might know this party you speak of. And if so, they may be sympathizers with our kind. Ha, they, they didn't seem such, but if you say, I'm listening. Particularly the dwarvish chap. His whole face turned scowl when I spoke the truth. I don't believe he likes many people. Huh. Such is their kind. The dwarves should find themselves back underground. Ask him if he would be willing to help aid in an escape if plans hatch at some point in the near future. It's better than sitting and rotting in this place. If you have a plan, I'm all ears. I'm going to give him just a little indication of the plan for tomorrow. What are you giving him? A, a plan in the works for escape in some point in the near future. Maybe not tomorrow, some point in the near future, given an opportunity if we were outside. Well, be there such an opportunity, I'll do my part. As I told them, if I if they spring me out of here, I'll give them what they want. If they're so bold enough to break one out of Revel's End, then they certainly are legends. At that point, I lay back down on the cot and laugh. And just tell them good night, friend. Ha! <laughs> Sleep well. And we'll flash to the rest of you guys. What are you guys doing? Anything at all over in the conciliators' rooms? Uh, Ordella, Harkas, Cadillac, Zarya. Prior to the following day, Harkas has his mug of cold making and mm -hmm. is just throwing random things in there and making them cold and then dumping them yeah. back in. <laughs> it's just like freezing bits of dirt. I'd really be good on this bourbon. I'd like to pour it in there and have it nice and chilled. Cadillac, what about you? Um, I, 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 I guess I am uh, shining Dust Crusher and going, it sure is nice to have a weapon. Yes, it is. I got a stick. I got a stick. I got a stick. Hey, 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 hey. Um, This is something that occurred to me um, a few moments ago. Mm -hmm. That negotiating the uh, the release of our weapons may have been a great idea. Hmm. Hmm. That would be. So I guess I, I guess Dust Crusher will <laughs> will be on the front line. <laughs> I suspect. I suspect. If you want to know what I suspect, the warden would say they will be returned to you upon the return of my prisoner. Which would be fair. You were granted anything in the armory. So you can all take a long sword or 
short sword or shield or axe or anything that you like, non-magical. So if anybody is disarmed of their weapons, uh, you were granted anything out of the armory. Didn't she only have us give up magic stuff? So if we had a non-magic weapon, we still have that? Uh, unless or did we give up everything? You give up everything unless it was concealed, okay. unless you managed to conceal it. Uh, right. I got my laser pistol in. Yeah. Okay. So, like, for example, he hit a laser pistol and has one. Oh. Yep. Okay. Uh, if I could get an axe from there, that would be great. Yep. Like a battle you axe. can just add a regular old battle axe. Okay. Your magical powerful stuff will be granted back to you when, you're, when your quest is done here. And anybody else that needs anything routine from the armory? Or Della? Can I grab a great axe or just you a... Sure, you sure can. Sweet. And same thing with Harkus and same thing with Cadillac. Cadillac, you have a stick that doesn't work. Uh, Dust Crusher is pretty good as a, as a beaten stick. Mm, so. But don't you have to cast magic to turn it into a beaten stick? No, at least I don't think so. Because it's a hollow staff that magically fills into a hammer. No, it's a. I think Dust Crusher is a is a war hammer. Mm mm. It only becomes a war hammer once you sort of draw it. Right now, it's like a chopstick. Well, I didn't know that. I thought it was a. I thought it was a regular war hammer. Oh yeah, no, you know you're right. It is literally just a religious stick. Yep. You can quack him with the stick. <laughs> Um, so what would the da- what is the damage of a re- of a religious stick? Uh, quarter staff. Right now it's just like a quarter staff. Okay. I guess I'll stick with the quarter staff. Your call. Anybody else? Armoring up with anything temporary? Yeah, I'm gonna grab just a. Some kind of a staff, I guess. Okay. You can get a regular old quarter staff if you like. Okay. The next morning comes. You all can take a long rest if you haven't had one. And, uh,. One of the guards approaches you all, and after chow, basically, had breakfast, says, um, it is time. Prisoners are going to be taken to the yard. We've been told by the warden that you're going to engage in some sort of activities, and that we are not to interfere heavily with you. You have free reign. Um, Yatara and Prisoner 237, you two are taken to here, to this courtyard. There are, uh, hang on. Copying and pasting in Mac is a lot harder. There are four guards in here, and there are uh, two other prisoners that are taken in with you. So there are four of you that are sort of allowed to walk around in fresh air. And there are four guards kind of patrolling each in the four, like, corners of this area. And then there's the tower above you with uh, the three guards in there. You all are in the center of this open courtyard room. The uh, boat area is, you know, to the north up here. And... Yeah. What are the rest of you doing as... Prisoner 242, Prisoner 237, Prisoner 132... And prisoner one seven five are all in the courtyard now. I'll help you move to where you need to go. You guys can just verbally tell me what you want to do. Is 
because it's about to go down. Don't all jump in at once. Where's Cadillac Granite? I'm going to turn Cadillac Granite Guts now. <laughs> or maybe I'll turn to Leonard. Leonard, all right, you've been in, you've been told the prisoners have been taken to the courtyard. What do you want to do? Hopefully we're setting oh. up our flashy light things. I don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to pass out the flashy light things. Okay. How many of them did you make? Uh, I intended to make three. Okay. So let, let's say I made three. Who are you giving them to? So I'm going to give two. Let's see. Who is, who is just absolutely useless because they don't have gear? Um, Harkus is pretty solid because Harkus is a monk, so it can do stuff without gear. You're all pretty solid. I think we I think we all can do stuff. All I right. think you and Cadillac are probably the least solid without gear. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah but, I'm, sure. but I'm also a tank. So there's a that. A tank with a stick. <laughs> a tank with a big stick. Yep. So, there... There are two ways this can go, because what Leonard has been doing uh, for the past uh, 20 minutes or so is sticking his hand in one of his pockets and saying, flash, and sticking his hand in the other pocket and saying, boom, just to try to keep these relatively similar looking devices uh, clear in his head. One pocket's got three flash grenades the other one's got an explosive grenade and he doesn't want to throw the wrong one at the wrong time you don't want to mix them up you want to get the flashies and the boomies right but but that flash that boom could destroy the central tower uh, which would be uh, one heck of a distraction if we need it but i'm going to hand cadillac one of the flashies okay and i guess zaharia one of the flash one of the flashies okay Zarya, you think it may be spread far enough apart to uh, sort of direct from multiple directions attention away from the door through which we're making our escape. Okay. You're all led out into the hallway and uh, please around the bend, Veli is with you, who you would definitely recognize, but um, he's in the back. Leonard, uh, Cadillac, Harkis, who's leading the bunch here? Probably Harkis and Cadillac near the front. And you're told um, basically you were led around the bend here for the guards. Lead you guys around the bend. They told the courtyard that the prisoners are in is through this door here. Uh, there are no guards posted here, and they seem to have kind of cleared out a path for you. Um. Should we make some commotion out here uh, to attempt to draw the guards out into the hallway so that we have fewer to deal with in the in the um, courtyard? Can you move Zarya to where the rest of us, everybody is? I can't see. Uh, let me find you, Zarya. I'm sorry. You're good. There you go. Just narrow the little hallway. Through this door here is the courtyard that the uh, prisoners are in. We've been super wrecked. 
the guards have sort of cleared out of this area of whatever you're going to engage in. So it's time to pop this shit off. Okay. So, where's our door to the courtyard? Uh, right there. The one up there. Yep. So I, I'm thinking we bust through into the courtyard looking like we have fought our way there. Uh, I think having a guard weapon is a good look. I think it makes us look like we knocked some people out, took their weapons, and have. Wait, is the elevator down this direction we're already at? The elevator would be to the outside, would be further down the hall to the north. Perhaps we just have them play dead so we don't actually have to knock them out? Yeah, that was my thought. If we could could draw a couple of them into the hallway and then make them make them play dead, then we could even out our odds uh, with what happens in the actual courtyard. It would also help with the illusion that uh, we have fought our way in here somehow. Right, and then we bust into the hallway and say, okay, we've cleared a path to the elevator, let's go. Yeah. Okay, how are you gonna do that? That's the plan. So I guess we start making a commotion out here, like we're fighting um, fighting mm-hmm. guards. Roll me some group performance checks to perform the sounds of chaos in combat. <laughs> yeah, like you're like, ow, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ooh. That's the worst Wilhelm scream you've ever heard. Ordella looks at you sort of strangely. Oh! What is wrong with us? <laughs> we can't pretend the fight it's either all or nothing. After 17, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so the orcs Arcus, are looking at like, what's going on? Arcus and Ordella, you do a pretty decent job. It was all coming down to Leonard. I have not set a high difficulty bar here. I set a DC 10. Wow. So I needed more people to make a DC 10 than did not. So all yeah, right. you, you succeed by the skin of your teeth. Wow. Um, and uh, as you do Cadillac's that, over there dancing instead of fighting because he doesn't know how to fake it. Yeah. You hear, <laughs> but it looks convincing enough. You sounds hear, like it sounds like Cadillac on any given Saturday. There you go, exactly. <laughs> you hear some sounds of, what's going on out there? And the door to the courtyard... Uh, Cadillac's over there. Everybody was come to fighting. Door to the courtyard busts open, and two of the guards burst through said door and draw their weapons on you. I know. Hey, what's going on? And uh, does the door close? Do they see secure the door the, beside, behind doors open, them? Doors, doors still open. Is this is in the moment? Okay. All right. Everybody, so, roll initiative. We are in a tiny hallway. You're in a very tiny hallway. You're able to push past each other. Oh. I gotta remember it's optional. Yeah. All right. Well, Marcus, you're up first. Um. Okay, so. Do I just need to add like a quarter staff on here or something? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Macintosh is screwing me. I'm gonna have to refresh the page, hang on. I also don't have a mask. 
a mouse I'm having to use the trackpad which is terrible. Alright, yeah, you're up, Harkus. What are you doing? Okay, um, I'm just... Two guards and thing, they've drawn swords. Okay, um... I am going to... I guess... Push up on this first one. Yep. And swing my quarterstaff a couple of times. At him. So, yeah, that is. Um, and then I'm not actually trying to damage him, I guess. So you're WWEing it? Yeah. So um, I just want to make it look really good. Um, yeah. Give me a good performance. Roll the damage and then give me a good performance. Okay. Hold on. Pretty good. Uh, you make it look real good, like you hit him, but you really don't damage him any. You kind of like take the quarter step and punch it into his stomach, and then flick it up under his chin. But it sort of it looks real convincing, but uh, it doesn't actually strike him. Any. Um, he's up, and I think he uh, he sort of gets it, and he. Uh, Throws himself down on the ground and like feigns unconsciousness. Uh, Ordella, what do you do? I look at the next guard and I uh, raise my axe up and I just give him a look. His <laughs> eyes get real big. He better fall to the floor. If you raise the axe, what are you doing with it? Uh, I'm going to swing it close to him, and okay. he better take the hint and fall. <laughs> roll, me, roll, me a, uh, roll me a real important performance check and yeah. make the oh, back roll. I hope so. I don't have any pluses to it. Ooh. Roll the attack roll. Roll the attack roll, okay. Uh, yeah, that makes some contact. Roll the uh, damage. Oh! Sorry, man. I'm not as good. Oh, uh, you swing the axe down and you you miss him. You don't make like full contact with him, uh, but the axe does sort of glaze off of his uh, armor, basically, and his like leather armor, and uh, smacks his uh, sword down out of his hands. But it it's not like obvious that you uh, made like that you hit him. Uh, so he sort of feigns taking some damage. Leonard, you're up. <laughs> All right, so Leonard, making sure that it is within. Well, no, no I'm gonna save that for later. I'm gonna come up to this guy because he's still standing, right? Yeah. He he sort of like feigned taking a hit, but the performance wasn't good enough to like drop him. No, so I'm yeah. going to do... Then shouldn't uh, he be the one rolling performance? Mm, I'm making you guys roll. It's more fun that I'm way. Gonna, oh, okay. It, it, it might, no. Oh, I can't use magic. Your laser fist is not magic. You can punch him in the face. Your fist isn't magic. Oh, I don't, I don't have a mace of smiting. Yeah. I'm going to... Uh, try to get super performative and uh, do an unarmed strike against him. And I'm going to take like a pseudo martial arts pose and like yeah. hit him really hard with my fist and say some something like, key strikes! Okay. <laughs> and see if he just, just drops. Real performance. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, you you summon up a uh, summon up a uh, key strike and punch him square in the chest, and uh, I think he sort of rolls over backwards onto the ground, dropping his sword. He's not unconscious. wasn't good enough to like 
make him look unconscious, but he certainly rolls over on the ground and is down now. Okay, and and right in front of the door, uh, I'd like to pick up his sword and just look into the courtyard. Okay, so he's sort of his back. Yeah, you can move up. This guy is feigning unconsciousness, having been smacked really hard by a quarterstaff in the head. And you sort of punched him in the chest. You're able to look into the courtyard. Uh, Two of the guards that are in there as you do that, they break and try to grab uh, prisoners. I'm going to say they grab the other two. Like, deliberately, they grab the other two prisoners that are in there. And 237 and 242 are sort of unmolested in there. Okay, I, I have a plan for when it is my turn once again. Okay. But I'm step into the room just so other people can get through. It is the veteran's turn. He grabs his uh, sword, picks it up, and starts to kind of try to clamber to his feet and takes a terrible swing at you, Leonard, missing by a country mile. Cadillac, you're up. Okay. I am going to um, go ahead and move up here to see if I can um, uh, uh, render this veteran guy out of the um, out of the fray. Okay. Roll me performance. And I will do it gingerly. Um, do I need to roll the quarterstaff too, or just, just performance? tell me how you're going to do that? Are you swinging your quarterstaff at him? So yeah, I charge him, and um, given my catastrophic performative um, uh, situation earlier, um, I am going to yell for Grindolfa. For Grindolfa. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> All right, roll me with your quarter staff. Okay, he's not intimidated by Grindolfa, unfortunately. Um, oh, that's display. That isn't. That was not a roll. Yeah. So, are you going to let me roll this? No, so that's going Quit to be... It. You need to equip it in uh, the army. Okay, I, I, let me see. I'm sorry, I thought I could click it from the um, D&D Beyond thing. you got to add it to character. This is going to be a really important roll. Okay, uh, give me just a jiffy. Just if you got, if you can, just roll me d twenty plus your strength. Okay. And you can add your provisions to bonus. Yeah, it's not pulling up when I search for it. Sorry, well, adding adding equipment for me has always been a little bit of a chore, and I'm, I have never gotten the hang of it. Okay, so that's d- a d twenty plus four, or I'm sorry, d twenty plus uh, three. Uh, probably plus three six three. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, roll me, uh, roll me 1d8 plus, uh, plus three. Now you smack him in the head for six damage. Your performance is not that good you actually make contact as you're trying to feign the attack you smack him i'm with sorry him with dust crushers you you know for Grindolfin. and he kind of looks up at you like what the hell <laughs> like, get, get down <laughs> uh, he falls down on the ground and is like <laughs> he goes down and closes his eyes but he's sort of like looking at you like what the hell man <laughs> Gonna it's leave like, a mark, man. Yeah. As everybody Jeez. else is just punishing these people, I just sort of look at them and just shake my head. Like, <laughs> this is not that hard, people. <coughs> you actually hit me. Um, Zarya, you're up. All right, I'll rush forward, seeing them down. Um, and once I get to the door, I'm gonna grab the flash bomb and. Are, wait, hold on. Are, there aren't any. I 
thought there would be more out here. There's just the two guards there and they're leading the other ones away. There are that you can't see right now. Let me let me make it visible so you can see the guards okay. above you. And they are readying like crossbows, basically. Uh, let me just make that visible so you can see what's going on here, okay? So this is in a tower that's like 30 feet up where you're at. There are three guards now that are overlooking all of you. Are you able to see that now? Yes, I can. All right, uh, so... They're overlooking everything. There's three of them. And they are... Let me delete that, actually. There's no sense in worrying about that door. Uh, they're elevated. They're not ground level. That door is on the ground level to get up to where they are. Okay. And are these, like, uh... Arrow slits? Are they like windows or what are they? Uh, they're like over a ledge. Like you can see them over a ledge. The edge. Okay, so I think that if I throw something, I could potentially get it over the ledge. Yeah, it's thirty feet up. You'd need a you need to make a athletic check to like. Okay. Know if it's good. And yeah. Get out there. So I'm gonna rush to here. I think I've got enough movement for that. And then, uh, yeah, I would like to try to throw the flash bomb up there. Okay, make me an athletics check to throw a flash bomb. Oh. Critical fail. <laughs> okay. Do you have inspiration or anything? No. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. As you go to throw it, um... You pull the ripcord and uh, you set it off in your hand. <laughs> it oh, dear. It's like the 4th of July all over again. It's like the 4th of July finger. all over again. Um, everybody on the ground level, this means Yatara, Zarya, Prisoner 237, and uh, the veterans and the other prisoners, all of y'all are blinded. It's just incredibly bright light. The, uh, the guards in the tower above also can't really see much for a half second but the people that are really flash blinded are uh is really uh Zarya. she's like the most <laughs> basically everybody else on the ground level has been blinded by this tremendous bright light flash that you intend to toss up but it uh, exploded in pain uh back up to harkis um all right, well, I guess I would like to, having, having seen this nonsense occur, um, and knowing that I was not given one of the flash and bangy fun toys, um, I guess I'm going to head down here and... You talked to Leonard about that. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to head down here and sort of make my way over. All right. Where are you? Where are you heading back to? I'm sorry. Head over here towards. So you enter into the you enter into the courtyard. Yeah. Uh, you see Yatara there, and you see Baelish Gunt there, and you see Zarya there, and Zarya looks like like a Looney Tune. Her eyes are just like going like ding 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 ding, ding, ding. and uh, both. Uh, uh, Yatara and uh, Yatara, you should have rolled initiative too. You get an initiative in this as well. Um, Sorry, I didn't know I was actually involved in all. Yeah, you're involved in it. You can initiate in it. So go ahead and roll your initiative. Um, but yeah, you're sort of blinded right now. Uh, do you do anything? If you or are you using the dash action to get in there? Um, I guess I'm going to use my dash action to act like I'm Okay. You're blind, so where are you trying to get to? Are you grabbing Gaunt or are you run? Yeah, I'm going to grab him by his arm and just run towards where I'm going to leave or the three with. Right. Okay. okay. How about you roll me perception disadvantage to see if you figure out which way he is out. Seven. Okay. 
I'm gonna roll a uh, d12, and we're gonna determine which direction you run. Actually, no. It's gonna be. Uh, it's like a big egg. I'm sorry. Still set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Uh, you run your full distance in this direction, which is what thirty feet, or are you dashing sixty feet. Yeah, that's right, so just 30. Okay. Well, you run and smack into a wall yeah. over in the corner. As you, you grab the man next to you, blinded by this flash of light, trying to suss your way out, but uh, your perception wasn't all that good, and you you kind of veered off and ran off into the corner with him. The rest of you see that. Uh, Harkus, you see that as you enter the room. What are you doing? Harkus didn't get to see that before. What? Sorry, I had a, I was I was kid managing for a minute. Yeah, that's okay. As you sprinted into the room, did you just dash to get into the room? Yes. Okay. Then it'll be to the uh, veterans in the tower. Um one of them fires a crossbow bolt down at uh, you, Harkus and uh, Zarya. And that uh, lands in the snow and dirt uh, near your feet. You're not certain if that was an intentional miss or uh, if they just missed. But it is to Ordella. All right. Um, question. So are we aiding Yatara to get out or are we aiding the other guy to get out? Because I was thinking about going over there to them. And trying to grab some biting guy to I thought they were a combo package, was the idea. Well, I didn't know, like, with the plan and stuff, with, um... Because, uh, Yatara said he didn't know us. Yeah, I think that's up to, uh... I think it's up to you, Ordell. I think Yatara was feigning like, uh, he did know you all. I think okay. you were part of his rescue plan. All right, well, then I'm going to go over here and grab a hold of Yatara. Okay. Grab him. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Um, let's see. I'm just going to grab him and try to guide him out since he can't see. We're going towards the door or towards the tower. We're all better. And uh, crossbow. Let's see. Does anyone else have another flash thing that might be better at throwing? I have one. Okay. Alec has one in Leonard. Leonard's up now. Okay. All right. Um, then I'm going to bring it back up. I guess start running toward the tower. Or are you running back towards Leonard down here? Oh, yeah. There he is. Okay. You grab him and pull him and start running. You mm -hmm. resist or go with your car. You're blinded. Somebody grabs you and starts to pull. I tell him to come with me so okay. he can hear my voice. He can hear your voice. Very good. Come with me if you want to live. Yep. All right. Run, with your you move with your It's movement, dangerous out there. Take this. With your movement, you're able to make it to back to about to the door. Leonard, you're up. Okay. There are I two guards up there readying crossbow bolts. Yeah, now that everybody is here, I'm going to take my my flashbang out. The flashy. Okay. Not the boomy. Okay. And I'm going to try to pitch it That's a ways. Here. Are you going to try to... So they're in a tower that is 30 feet up. Okay, so 50, the 60 of this away, 30 feet up, Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, the closer you decide to go, the lower the check is. Yeah, I want to get out there a bit. The I'm further back you are, the harder the check. So you run about halfway out into the room and are going to throw a flashbang trying to go up to the top? A little right, further. I'll okay. run. 
I'll run 20 feet in. Okay. And try to throw here. More like 30 feet, but we'll go with oh, it. Oh, well then, I'll just use my full movement. Okay. To get in, and then hope I can dash out. All right, roll me athletics. That's going to be Nice. It. That's not a crit fail. Uh, your flashbang lands directly on top of those guards with the crossbows and explodes with an absolutely blinding light. And you see all of them clench their eyes. It's their turns, and they fire off crossbow bolts in sort of random directions into the sky uh, and then drop their weapons, screaming, My eyes, my eyes! <laughs> and... Uh, Cadillac, you're up. You've got two guards feigning unconsciousness at your feet. You've got Ordella grabbing uh, Yatara, who is also holding on to Prisoner 237, and she's pulling him towards the door. You've got uh, three of your party members in the room. Leonard just tossed a flashbang, and a couple of them are blinded. Harkis is in there looking for trouble. Um, Harkus, uh, can see, correct? Yes, Harkus is not blinded. Okay, um, so between Harkus and Zarya, I'm sorry, between Harkus and Leonard, uh, they'll be able to retrieve Zarya, probably. Yatara, um, and our new friend, I have been secured by Ordella. Um, I think, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start moving up the hallway, okay, uh, to clear a path, seeing that um, so that we can move down here quickly um, once uh, we retrieve the people out of this area. Okay. Uh, as you're going down there, you start to hear the sounds of clamoring and activity, as uh, no major alarms have gone off, but you can definitely hear. And that. And that is the direction of the elevator, correct? Yes. Okay. I, I, I guess I guess I'll take the dash action and go ahead and go up full way to this corner. Okay. You can start to see several guards piling out of some sort of like guard room down here at the corner. Got it. At least one that's making the rounds around the, the corner there. Uh, through a door that leads towards the elevator to the ship. The elevator to the ship door would be right over there. Got it. Or the hallway that leads to the exit where the ship would be around there. Zarya, you're in the room. You're blind as a bat. What do you uh, do? Yeah, I think I'm... I, I mean, I still think that uh, uh, Baelish is there. I don't know that he isn't, so I guess I'm going to try to reach him. So I guess I'm going in a random direction and Hoping I get to roll perception, roll disadvantaged perception, and see grabbing you, a random see, prisoner. See if you can figure it out. Okay. Uh. Well, okay. Uh, you managed to see a figure through your sort of blindedness, and you can hear footsteps. You're running in that direction. Yes. All right. You run and you grab straight into Harkus, grabbing Harkus. You have no idea that it is Harkus unless you're going to try to perceive who it is, but you've grabbed a hold of someone. It smells like him. <laughs> I don't know. Did maybe, I... maybe it does smell like Harkus. Unless Harkus says anything, he's grabbing. It smells like yeah. a dead Yeti. Yeah, follow me. We'll get you out of here. <laughs> and Harkus is up now. Harkus, what do you do? As like, Zarya, who you can see is clearly like blinded, is uh, seeing stars, runs up and grabs you and says, Come on, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> you have no idea like, where we're going. Like blind mouse. All right, you come with me <laughs> and I'll start leaving the ground. <laughs> She'll allow it. <laughs> like so leading a little old lady across the street. So you start leading him out? Yes. So we're we're leading we're going back out. Alright. 
Oh, yeah. Follow Cadillac. I'm going to move these guys off the screen. They are there. They are unconscious. Just so you're aware. All right. It is veterans upstairs turn, still blinded. Ordella, you're up. The two over here are busily trying to secure the other people. They were also semi-blinded by the flash down below. Uh, Ordella, what are you doing? All right, I guess I'm leading them through the door back inside. All right. You managed to pull the uh, blinded compatriots. No, you're up here. Okay. Through the door. And you can see Cadillac now down the end of the hall, sort of pointing and waving you in his direction. All right. I follow him. All right. Everybody's running down the end of the hall there. Leonard, what are you doing? Just chunked it. Right. I am now dashing back to the door 30 feet and into the hall 30 feet. All right. You're able to get there. As that happens, uh, three more men round the uh, corner. And they're going to get their own initiatives. Before they do, kind of like you rounded the corner first, you're up. Okay. Guards are filled out of the guard room, bearing swords and things, and they're screaming, screaming guardish profanities at you. What's going on? Stop! Oh. Um, once again, as um, theatrically as possible, um, I see, once again yell out for Grandolfa. And I uh, charge uh, at uh, this guy here at the front. And so, um, is that a performance? Yep, you need a performance check in an attack roll. Okay. Yeah, you need an attack roll. Okay. And I figured out how to get the quarter staff working. Right. Yay! Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> I haven't I 100% takes... got the message. What we're doing here. Six bludgeoning damage. And you see him look out and go, ah, what the hell? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Zarya, you're up. It's really convincing oh, yeah. clamoring sounds as you, as you whack this dude <laughs> in the face. So it looks like I'm in front of Harkis, so I imagine like he is pushing me forward. Um, so kind of getting the message, this is the direction I'm supposed to be going. I'm going to reach out for the wall and use the guide around. Um, yep. But I'm assuming I can't really see right now, so I'm just going as far as I can go until I bump into Granite Guts. Yep, that's what you said. And, and I think that's all I'm doing. Okay. Vision is slowly starting to come back. Yeah, you're sort of able to make out shapes and things now. Fine vision. Yep. But you sort of can start to make out some shapes. Uh, Harkus, you're up. All right. Um... Uh, I guess I'm just gonna keep moving. Get up here. Where did? Yeah. Can't really hear you. Speak up or closer to the mic or something. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm gonna get up here and I'm just gonna look at this guard. Raise my quarter staff. Uh, kind of swing at him with the intention to blow past him and sort of blow at him while I'm doing it. Yeah, give me that good performance check. He's currently smarting as Cadillac smacked him in the face. Make me an attack roll. That's not good. That's going to hit. Try to blow past him, but you really hit the guy. Sorry, Steve. And you look at him, and he sort of looks back at you. And boy, dude is really, dude is really pissed off. <laughs> 
Let me go. Anyway. As I move past him, I'm just going to drop a gold piece on him. Dude is really pissed off. It's his turn. And he uh, swings a uh, swings a long sword at you. Uh, swings a long sword at you, uh, Arcus. 16 to hit. That'll hit. Oh, the banner doesn't work. Hang on. The seven slashing damage as he cuts at you a bit. Brings a uh, another long sword attack at you. Twenty one to hit. Look. Uh, that's gonna be six slashing damage. Under my breath, I'm gonna go. I could have put you in the infirmary. We could have. Uh, another one is up, and he bursts through the door out here. And comes charging up, and uh, he feigns a swing at uh, Cadillac, but misses by a near mile. Cordella, you're up. Hmm. Uh, I'm still running that way, trying to lead them. Okay. Um, pulling prisoner 237. Yeah. Zarya broke off from you and sort of feeling the wall up until she ran into Cadillac. Okay. Right. You reach there. There are three guards. One of them, they seem to be engaged in combat with your uh, with your compatriots. You see one of them has been swacked a couple of times and you see Harkus uh, uh, is bleeding some that he's been slashed at. Oh no. Um... Let's see, is he still in engaged with the other guy? Yeah, there's three of them there. Two of them are sort of engaged. So. Okay, um, um, the, uh, I engage the one with Harkus and try to, like, okay. push him out of the way. Are you gonna, are you gonna, like, try to push him? Or are you gonna try to, like, hit him with your whatever? Um, swing, swing your axe or something. It just, it's a small area. And there's like a whole bunch of people in that tiny area probably can't use my great axe. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm going to try an unarm strike. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a hit. Roll me performance. Are you trying to fake it or are you trying to hit him? Uh, I'm trying to hit him and get him off Harkus. Okay. Roll damage. Now I'll say with five, you're able to, uh, Smack him for five damage and uh, push him back uh, okay. five feet. All right, and I'm gonna like move heart, try to get Harkus to move forward so we can keep moving. Yeah, you you sort of I'm gonna nudge him along, punch him and push. They've got swords drawn and so Leonard, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to continue to hear, and I'm going to, so here's what I'm going to try to do. I am going to level my laser pistol. Okay. I really want to know how you want to make this look good for your prisoner that is, thinks he's escaping. And I'm going to aim at this space. Show me the space. Okay. Like right in the middle of three of them. You're trying to miss all three of them. I'm trying to miss them, but get close enough that they know what's coming. And I'm going to scream out the second blast is more power powerful. You better run. Okay. Uh, okay, here's how this is going to work. Roll me an attack roll with your laser pistol. Okay, that's good enough that you hit the space that you intended to hit. Good. Roll me intimidation. Oh, 
they all uh, sort of bare their swords at you and sort of grunt. Uh, this one charges up and takes a swing at Ordella with the sword, and uh, he misses. Adelaide, you're up. Okay, so since we are jammed up here, um, and I have got Zarya um, right behind me, I want to attempt to um, use some of my dwarven stoutness here, and instead of attacking, um, I want to um, try to scream in a very intimidating fashion, and then I'm going to hold the um, the staff of Dust Crusher sort of in front of me horizontally, and I want to attempt to just plow these guys out of the way, um, hoping that uh, with Zarya behind me, um, I, we will win any strength contest. This is a battering ram, yeah, basically. Exactly, exactly. Okay. That's what I want to try to do here. Make me a strength check. Take advantage of it. Beat a 23. Okay. The guard crit. Oh. 20 is not good enough. The guard just happened to roll really, really well. But isn't Ooh. Zarya helping? Kinda? Yeah, that's why you got advantage on the check. Oh, okay. Uh, with the two of you, the guard just rolled a crit. A crit's the best. It's happened sometimes. Uh, you ram into him up close and uh, smack into them. And I'm going to say one of them uh, in the back falls down. Uh, and it may be that he fainted falling down and that like he's making a good show of it. You're not 100% clear if that is or isn't, but uh, he sort of tumbles over as you ram into him. But uh, um, they sort of stand firm. So, um, uh, if... Hmm. So, that's an action, right? That wouldn't be movement? Yeah, that's an action. Okay. Um, is the guy right in front of me the one that we've walked a couple of really good times? Yeah. Uh, the one that you walloped a couple good times, uh, you put, uh, Ordella just pushed backwards. Okay, so it's he's right here. Yeah. Okay. That's my turn. Zarya, you're up. You can see <laughs> sort of now. Might be a little hard, yeah. but you can see. Uh... Okay, so I was pushing into the back of Cadillac. Um, do I understand what Cadillac was trying to do, or was I just yep. inadvertently helping because I was a battering ram no, running into I think into you understood. Shit. Cadillac had probably told you. said, Sorry, I charge! Okay. Uh, can I give Cadillac a second push uh, into uh, them? Yeah, sure. See if they trip over their already prone person. Sure. Cadillac is Athletics. Like you want to make another strength check, Cadillac, or athletic check? Um, actually, You're I'm happy for Zari. I'm happy for Zari to do it, and I'm just sort of like the butt end of the battering ram. <laughs> All right, Zaria, you beat a twenty-three. They crit again. Sorry, I didn't know that was an advantage, but now, even with a plus five, unfortunately, you would have needed like an eighteen or something. Uh, this card is strong, man. You ran him into him, but he holds firm. Arcus, you're up. All right, so now I'm just pissed. Uh, <laughs> so I'm up with quarterstaff, and was it which one was it that hit me? Uh, the one that Ordello just pushed backwards. Okay. Well, that's probably going here. Breaking out the quarter staff. Yep. Are you feigning the hit or are not you not at all? Hit it? <laughs> huh? Not at all. You you so you're trying to hit, hit him? Yes. Alright, twenty seven is a hit. That does seven bludgeoning damage. And then should have listened to the plan. And then I'm gonna unarm attack him once. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. 
And I'm basically aiming for his jaw. Oh, that is 10 bludgeoning damage. He drops down on the ground and uh, feigns unconsciousness. I'm gonna look at him and I go, and stay down, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> It's his turn, and he's just lying on the ground. He said, ow. The other one is up and takes a swing at Cadillac and misses. Or Della, you're up. You got one prone, and one just swung at Cadillac and missed, and one that is unconscious, but seems maybe he's faking it down on the ground. All right, I'm just going to keep going with the plan. Which way Why are we? Why do I have guitar in initiative? Uh-oh. Something. Do we miss him again? Yeah, for some reason, I don't have... For some reason, Yatara is out of initiative again. Yeah, he dropped out. I don't know why you would have dropped out. I didn't change the initiative order. Right, well, I'm adding you back in. You had a 13. Yatara has been valiantly defending the flanks. Yeah, I'm like, why is Well, he's blinded too, time? still. Or is he not blinded anymore? No, but the vision is starting to come back. It's not complete. All right, well then, ready. definitely they can both start fighting. Yeah, you're a little bit disadvantaged. I'm going to go to Cadillac at the moment. Actually, I'll go to Guitar. Guitar, you have a turn. You've been skipped. So what are you, what are you doing? Rushing. I don't know what I would like to do. Do whatever Guitar would do. Wait, is, am I still bound where we can't cast magic? Uh, Here. yes. Okay. Well, you're still in the anti-magic field. It can just be I'm running up behind these guys. Or you could run Chip up and somebody. Go the fence. Um... This option. You really, you don't think I really have going on right? I don't know. Um, I might just run along beside them all. To be honest with you. You're a prisoner. You're supposed to be acting like a prisoner. Yeah. I'm gonna feign running against the wall. I'm so happy. Fair enough. I had sort of lost the turn order. Um, Leonard. Okay. Where are you? Uh, so I'm going to, for my second shot, which is more powerful than the first, mm -hmm. uh, pull out my light crossbow. Yeah. And aim it at the remaining dude. Are you trying to miss him? Oh, no. You're trying to hit him with a crossbow bolt? He didn't run away, so I'm aiming at him. Okay. He had his chance to play along. I mean, I don't know if he's going to run away. From a laser? They don't know what a laser is. They do not. He doesn't have a clue. All right. Oh, no. No. That hits him. <laughs> Dunk. Did you forget the plan like they did? I told you the second shot was more powerful. Okay. He takes both damage. Uh, it's the one who's prone down the ground's turn. He stands up, draws his sword. Sees his buddy as a crossbow bolt in his chest. And he takes two swings at Ordella. Crit. That's going to be. Me. 18 slashing damage. Well, poopies, especially since I got skipped. <laughs> you got skipped in the initiative? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to go, and then you said, oh, Atari, Atari didn't go. 
Well, I thought Ardella, we were you're up. Yeah. Okay. We get it back into sync here. Oh lord. Um. So he actually slashes at you now. Okay. So can I go? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this guy in front of uh, Granite Guts. I like how it's going from play acting to we're murdering these dudes. <laughs> it didn't take much to mur for y'all to murder Hobo. Uh, let's see. How how bad does he look? Because I don't want to like totally kill anyone in this thing. Uh, pretty bad. All right. Well, then I'm just gonna punch him in the face. Kind of damage you're gonna do? Oh. Are you just gonna try to knock him out cold, or are you gonna try to fake hit him? Uh, just knock him out so he's out of our way. Okay. Roll me an attack. Or whatever you need. That's a hit. Five blood and damage. Which one are you going with? The one that slashed at you? Um. Yeah. Okay. All right, to Cadillac now. Or you had another turn, didn't you? You have two attacks. Do I? I sure do. Heck yeah, I've been using that. All right. Then I go for the other guy. Okay. Sorry this is running late, y'all. I'm trying to wrap it. I just didn't want to end oh, it. Oh, no. On a fight. All right. What's um, five plus? So the way this works is, what's your strength? Uh, strength is 18. What are your plus three to strength? Uh, plus four. Plus four? Uh-huh. Okay, so the way this would work is you get, uh, it's going to be 10 for your crit. Okay. Wow. I hope I didn't, like, knock too many teeth out. Yeah, he spins around and uh, falls down unconscious. All right, good. Let's go. I got one more that's up. Zarya, you can see again. Has about a minute. Oh, I thought fight. I did each guy. Okay. Uh, you only knocked out one of them, though. And... Cool. I think we may have skipped Granite Guts. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. Cadillac. More clicking. Finally back to Cadillac. Then Zarya. Okay, so. Um, the guy that's right in front of me, who's taken a huge amount of damage here. Um, the one that's taken a huge amount of damage is either unconscious or faking or unconscious. Right. So, like, I, like I don't want to kill these people, and I would prefer if the if if the damage wasn't huge. So, um, if this guy in front of me gets healed, is he going to become a problem again? Uh, like, what? Or, or does he? Or, or does he just turn the corner of being? at death's doorstep and remain unconscious. He's not at death's doorstep. Let's just leave him. Leave him alone. Make a medicine check if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Make um, a medicine check. Because that's, that's, that's what Cadillac would do. Um, he's not making death saves, Cadillac. He's down on the ground. He's still breathing. He isn't bleeding out. You don't think he's dying. What I want to do is I want to repair him a bit, but I don't want him getting back up. Well, you can't control his motivations. But what you can tell with a 10 medicine check is that he is not dying. Oh. His wounds are not mortal. Oh, God. Okay. So I guess then I step over him and... Um, attempt to um, give the guy behind him a big shove the same as I uh, attempted to earlier rather unsuccessfully. Okay, make a strength check. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a saving throw. Hold on. Oh, Jesus. Should have uh, kept you... it. I'm, I'm not going to take away your roll. You rolled a 19. It's just plus 3 instead of plus 4. That's a 22 versus 20. Uh, you managed to push him backwards. How far are you trying to push him? You push him probably five feet. Um, I, I would like to push him to here. <laughs> no, no. 
No. You you asked. <laughs> don't give There's me options. There's no amount of football you check that you're going to make a man fly 30 yards down to <laughs> So don't give me options if you don't want me using them. Okay. Yeah. As far as far as he can conceivably go, I guess. Uh, you are not like the world's greatest linebacker. You did not just check a man 30 yards down. Preferably beyond this doorway. Yeah. He's right about there. Okay. Zarya, you can see it. Okay. Uh, if I can run through everybody here. Yeah. Uh, can I try to clothesline this guy? I'm just gonna yeah. run and like stiff arm him. Yeah, sure. Just make okay. me like an athletic check. I, really I don't trust my dice at all tonight. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, any other time, we would love these rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Why tonight? Is this just just how we are? The dice just keep saying no. <laughs> Clearly. What's frustrating is I have a plus five to athletics. I would have even more if I had magic items, but I can't. So Yeah, yeah. so he, um, as you try to clothesline him, he just sort of like catches your arm and spin around him. Uh, so you're next to him. You spin around him, but you'll knock him over. Yeah. Arkin, you're up. All right, well. Take care of business, Arkin. I'd really like to just get out of here. Um, did this one see what I did to the last one? Uh, yeah. Can I just try to intimidate him into laying down? Uh, you can try. <laughs> These are prison guards. They don't want escaping prisoners. How are you intimidating him? Well, what I'd like to do is just sort of take the, the quarter staff, sort of twirl it around, raise it up like I'm about to hit him, and just see if he'll go down. He's certainly frightened. Uh, he sort of like tries or to step back away. Or something. He doesn't lay down on the ground, but he sort of like backs up from him. He's got his sword, and you can tell he's he has the frightened condition now. But he's not just like gonna lay down on the ground. But he's backing away from him. Okay. Um. All right. Are we going north or south? North is the way to the dock. Okay. Then I'm just gonna motion for everybody. To come. Okay. Are you like holding him off somehow? Okay, you're in by. What? Yeah, I just ran by him. I scared him. Believe yeah, me. definitely. That guy's unconscious. That guy's fading unconsciousness. Or Della, you're up. You still have the prisoner in your in your arm. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to pull him out this way with Harkus. And which way are we going? Like, this just way. keep going straight? Okay. Yep. All right. Opening the door at the end? Yes. Of course. <laughs> As you open the door, you manage to open a door to the outside of the prison grounds. There before you is a large mechanical oper operation on the edge of a cliff that seems to lower down to a docks above. I think as you have made it to the docks, this is as good a place as any to stop for the evening. Yay. We made it ish, kind of. Made it ish as Ordella has thrown open the docks and you're holding prisoner 237 that has made it to the outskirts of the prison as the outer door is open and the elevator lowering down to the ships below is before you. Give one more guard that you have not incapacitated yet. You just sort of frightened him all. This is where we'll end it for the eve. But we weren't really fighting. Last you guys didn't know over. that. The guards, yeah. They they, <laughs> they're definitely worse for the wear. But not dead. So one not of the things dead. one of the things I really like about this setup though is that it forces us to play in a different way than how we're used to relying on our skills and abilities, and that's mm -hmm. kind of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It lets the 
ever so poorly used uh, performance check come into play. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody had a really good time. Let me uh, kill the uh, Sirenscape music in the background. And uh, that was awesome, everybody. Hope everybody had a really good time. You've made it to the, sort of, to the docks. Uh, you can see that you, as you asked for, the docks have been lightly guarded with a couple of guards down there. And a ship uh, is before you. On, upon which I suppose you will put Prisoner 237, making him presume that he has escaped from Rebel's End to divulge said information to you that you need. Unbeknownst to him, a fully loaded garrison of guards mans this ship, possibly along with the warden to take him back into custody. We'll find out what happens next week. Yay. We'll Yay. See you Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, all.